Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. A little bit different format tonight. So this is a video response episode to the Kyle Christ channel. Those of you that keep up with Kyle's channel know that he is currently disassembling a low serial number 1936 Caterpillar RD4 tractor. In his last episode, he removed the timing cover from the front of the diesel engine and he got into a lot of the timing drive gears that were behind that. And that sparked a rather interesting discussion in his comment section. I believe it was Old American Iron over there tells about like 50-ish years ago, he remembers seeing a composite or like a fiber Caterpillar timing drive gear that had lost all of its teeth. And he had heard a story about how Caterpillar was using composite diesel engine components even back then, we're talking mid to late 1930s. Now granted, composite engine components are widely found like in high RPM, higher performance, super tight tolerance, like racing engines, you know, that we know today. But yeah, in the 1930s, Caterpillar was already using some composite forms of components in some of their diesel engines. I've also talked to other people that have heard of these possible fiber timing gears that Cat maybe used to use. Nobody had really ever seen one because of the ones that were said to have existed. Not many really survived, and most were allegedly replaced with steel counterparts uh, because of the high failure rates. So we're gonna put that legend to bed here. Um, well, Kyle asked me to weigh in. He knows I've got way too much stuff when it comes to old cats, so I might as well show you something. Right here, I've got a mostly complete timing gear set out of an early and very, very low hour Cat D4400 diesel engine. That's the same diesel engine that was found in Kyle's RD4. This was from a parts engine that I had picked up several years ago because the price was right and I just don't have any D4 stuff and because it was such low hour most of that engine was just pristine aside from two of the four cylinders had got water in them and that thing had sat for decades before I stumbled upon it so it was stuck fast but I made sure Kyle got most of the good stuff that came out of that engine because he can utilize all that stuff in his project. I didn't have a use for it. And I only kept a few just select pieces out of it that were just so darned cool. And because this engine was such low hour, we still have some surviving composite timing gears right here. So we'll take this magnet, I'll show you. We have a metal gear right here, it sticks. And then the one right next to it, nothing. That's a composite gear. We'll go to the one next to that. We're sticking to that one. But then the one beneath that, it's another one, composite gear. So what they would have done here, you can see we have that timing mark right there. That's a Formica gear, it's a big C. That would have meshed with the corresponding C on the crankshaft gear that would have been right here. Now Kyle has the crankshaft that has that steel gear on it now, but that steel crankshaft gear drove this primary camshaft gear. This primary camshaft gear was bolted to this secondary camshaft gear, which happens to be steel. So we had a steel crank gear on a composite cam primary gear that turned the steel secondary cam gear that turned the composite idler gear that turned the steel accessory shaft gear. So they very clearly arranged it, steel, composite, steel, composite, steel. Why they did that, I don't know. We'll get a little bit better look at these gears so you can see well the cam gear we have that steel center hub from the secondary gear out front and the composite gear was bolted to that it used this steel ring and these bolts that went around right there you can actually see like the the formica weave right there we've got the formica logo on that side of it over here we got the cat number 3b 1615 that's the part number for that and we have, once again, the Formica, there we are, logo on that idler gear. And we have the 2A3385, again, a cat gear. This one was molded to this bronze hub. So that's actually the bearing surface. That's the bronze part of that right there. So really interesting setup between these. And yeah, it has to be because this engine was such low hour that these things even still exist. They didn't have time to wear out or fail. This one, honestly, it's just, it's got to just be a few ounces. It's like there's just nothing here. So super, super cool the way they did that. 
So that now begs the question of how long did they use those Formica gears before they just went straight steel across the board from the factory. So we've got this 4G series parts book. It says D4 tractor, but the early 4Gs were the RD4s. And then by the time they hit end of production at 99.99, it was regular D4. But there's only two cross sections of camshaft and related gears for that whole 4G production run. And what you want to look at is the cross sections of these gears. Here's your Formica primary cam gear. Here's the steel secondary cam gear. Pretty much the same breakdown down below it too. You can tell the Formica cross section because they use kind of this checkerboard pattern. You have lines that go both ways. Whereas the steel gear cross section is just solid 45 degree lines that go across. The breakdown down below it is the same too. So we know that from the factory, all the 4G series D4s and RD4s came with those Formica primaries. Now we go into the 5T series manual. So we went in the progression of the D4 line, we had the 4G and then the 7J series and then the 2T series and we finally end with the 5T series. I don't have a 7J or a 2T book, but the 5T basically comprises the end of the D4400 diesel engine run. And we can see the cam shaft and gear breakdown on this page right here. And you can tell we've got solid 45 lines on each one. We know that those were all steel gears from the factory by the time they hit the 5T line. The curious part of it though, is the part numbers stayed the same. So right at the earliest of the 4G gears, we have this 3B1615 primary, 3B1615 primary right there. And then we also have the 2A3376 secondary, 2A3376 secondary. So although the part numbers stayed the same, the composition of these gears clearly changed somewhere between the 4G series of D4 and the 5T. So like I said, if anybody out there has a 7J manual or a 2T manual or both, I'd be really interested in what serial number break that cross section of that primary cam gear went from like the checker pattern indicating the Formica gear to the straight like solid 45 degree line indicating the steel. That's likely the only way we're going to know exactly when Cat decided at the factory we're going to have to go away from these composite gears because they're just not lasting long enough. Another odd fact is I've got a decent amount of other Caterpillar literature from service manuals to service bolt and archives. Nothing I have mentions anything about composite timing gears you know anything in gear trains engines anything like that so it's kind of odd that cat really stayed as quiet about that change as they did because they were usually pretty good at documenting those sorts of things so all right hopefully that debunks the whole legend of the supposed um composite timing gears that they used in some of the early diesel engines and if anybody tries to still say that they never existed just politely disagree and tell them that you know of a sasquatch that has a couple Ain't nobody gonna argue with that. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Tune in again.